Hello Bookaholics, welcome back to my channel. This is Angela here, your own Bookaholic brand name. If this is your first time here and wondering what this channel is all about, I talk about books in this channel, books that I've read, books that I'm reading, books that I'm planning to read, books that I love, books that I hate, and all things related to books. So if you're a Bookaholic like me, please do not hesitate from subscribing to my channel and also please like, share and comment. Today's video is a tag video. Uh, this is an original tag created by Brandon from Brandon's Bookshelf. He has a considerably new channel with an immense growth. He just crossed 500 subscribers. So congratulations to you, Brandon. I uh, was not tagged by Brandon uh, for this. He just left the um, tag option open so that anybody who is interested can go ahead and do this. Uh, I found the prompts in this uh, tag very interesting and um, uh, you know, I thought that I should give it a try. These were kind of prompts that I want to talk about. So without further ado, let's get into it. Prompt number one, what's most important, a good character, plot or message? So when I'm sitting down to read fiction. I'm assuming this question is for fiction because for non-fiction it is understandable it's a message or it's a subject matter that's most important. But when I'm sitting down to read fiction for me the most important part is the plot, the story. It needs to be engaging. That's the number one criteria for me and it should have a message that would be an added bonus that there should be some takeaway once I finish reading that book. But even the best story ever written with the best of characters with great message can just fall flat if it is not written well. So I would summarize my answer like this. I would love a great story which is beautifully written. I need beautiful prose in what I'm reading. Um, I, I would give an example. I think Malazan is a great example of beautiful prose. Second example would be uh, The Books of Babel, which I just finished reading. I'm, uh, it, this might be recency bias, but still, I cannot just stop gushing about, about this book. I cannot wait to reread them because there are so many quotable quotes, so many amazing emotional moments. Uh, so yes, that's what I'm looking for when I'm sitting down to read fiction. Prompt number two, should one read books about ideas or opinions they disagree with? I love this question a lot. Uh, my answer would be yes. Definitely yes. Now, uh, you know, um, until very uh, recently, I've been of the opinion or not just opinion because it, that was just the way I was. I used to read books that interested me. So, for example, if you take books about communism and socialism, so I used to read a lot, a lot of books about that and, you know, articles about uh, communism and socialism and never about capitalism because I, I thought that topic was irrelevant. Uh, for me, but uh, I understood that while engaging in um, uh, you know, discussions with people with similar interests that, you know, it is important for one to have a wholesome understanding of opposing opinions. That's one reason. And the second reason would be that, you know, the more and more you're exposed to an opposing viewpoint, uh, you develop a kind of patience to listen to the opposing viewpoint. You know, sometimes you know that what they're saying is wrong or you believe that what they're saying is wrong, but still you develop this <clears throat> kind of uh, patience and sometimes empathy towards where they're coming from, you know, about their opinion and how they came to that conclusion. Uh, so you do not end up judging a person based on their opinion, but you understand also from where they're coming from. And that comes with exposure to that viewpoint and that can come in the form of blogs or debates or, or reading books associated with that topic so definitely i would push anybody and everybody to read books that are you know opposing to your opinion not always because there is also uh, the saying that you know you should be open-minded but not so much that your brain falls off there is always a chance that one is wrong and you will never realize it if you're always looking only in one direction that is your direction unless you look at look at the other direction and try to understand you will never realize that you might have been wrong so it's important problem number three as tech advances what do you think will be the role of books <laughs> i suddenly remembered pavio's uh, answer to this question it was hilarious he says he said that <laughs> the role of books is never going to change if you're going to you know if suddenly all of a sudden everybody everywhere stop using umbrella <laughs> it 
the role of the umbrella doesn't change and like oh i laughed out loud okay uh <laughs> for that very hilarious anyway so <clears throat> so if tech advances i think you know there there will be options like you know you can just upload a book into your head or download a book into your head and then you don't have to read it you have the information there or the story inside your head um i think there will still be books around um i think there will be still people who want to read like it's right now there is a revolution of digital content but still you can see people you know obsessing over physical books so that will always be there i think there will always be people who are old school and would love to read physical books i don't think that will um, you know wither away <laughs> it's um, from the dawn of human civilization we've always been writing let it be on stone tablet or you know papyrus so we always had to written records in one form or the other but in the physical form and that kind of connection that humans have uh, throughout the uh what do you call the literary evolution uh that will stay for a long time unless it's like thousands of years and we forget what it was to be using physical books prop number 4 how important are summaries reviews and art in your book choosing okay art um so what i do is i when i see a book somewhere and uh, i'm just thinking whether i should read it or not what i do the first thing that i do is i go to goodreads and i check the ratings i check the number of ratings then i scroll down and i look into some of my favorite reviewers you know who i who i constantly follow and uh, see what their opinion is about whether they have read this book so basically i go by reviews um artwork not so much i you know i do not cover by i do not uh, buy a book for its map or anything like that uh for me plot and story is the most important factor when it comes to reading a book or buying a book prop number 5 should one ever skim or scan a book what <laughs> i hate skimming or scanning i hate people who do that and then claim that they have read the book no you have not read the book you have skimmed or scanned the book that's what you have done and i hate you know there are some influencers who say how to read five books in a day how to read a thousand page book in two days you are not reading it you are just skimming through it you are just scanning through it and you're just getting the gist of it that's the most disrespectful thing that you can do to a book and its author that you skim the book do not do that please don't do that i hate people who do that that's my answer to it i'm angry now <laughs> prompt number 6 should reading always be enjoyable it should always be enjoyable that's my answer i mean if you don't enjoy something don't do it not just reading let it be anything that you're doing in your life unless it you know unless you are forced to do it you know for your livelihood you know there are a lot of people who are stuck in jobs that they have to do because they have to do it to support their family to support themselves to earn a living that's fine uh but otherwise you know if you are having a hobby then why do it if you don't enjoy it uh but i know that sometimes you have to read something because you know if as part of a course that you have taken and you know then you have this one subject that you hate or one book that you are supposed to read to finish that course successfully then you are like you know stuck there reading that book that but you have to do it out of compulsion but otherwise don't read something you do not enjoy let it be fiction or non fiction it applies across the board i think prompt number 7 is it important to be well read um So I will approach this question in two ways. One is would I like people around me to be well read? Yes. I love to be surrounded with people, you know, with whom I can have intellectual conversations or just informal fun conversation with people who have read the same book that I have read. This is the conversation that I was lacking in my real life which pushed me into the tube world, you know, so that I can have this conversation online because I am lacking that in my real life. So yes I would love to be surrounded in real life with well read people so from that perspective yes but should everybody be well read for their own gain uh they can be if they choose to be but there is no compulsion because if they can have a an utterly fulfilling happy life uh without being well read that's fine good for them there is no compulsion as such but i think in terms of personal growth in, yes uh, in in terms of enriching others around you 
yes, it's good to be well-read. And also in terms, I think well-read people have better chance of nourishing and enriching people and the world around them in general, uh, you know, that the chances are more for them to do it than an, a person who doesn't read much. Uh, I don't know if you guys agree with me, but this is my opinion. <laughs> Problem number eight, what is your book buying process? So I just mentioned this in one of the previous prompts that, you know, I look up reviews in Goodreads. I check if the rating is good, if uh, the number of people that have voted for it and uh, also I will scroll down then I will look at the reviewers individual reviews and most importantly the first step that I take in streamlining the books that I want to read is definitely the genre I usually read uh, historical fiction fantasy science fiction to an extent uh, very rarely uh, and then definitely definitely popular science and history books from non-fiction section so this is how I streamline the books that I want to read and then from there on I look into the weightings and uh, the number of ratings and then also I go on to read individual reviews this is what this mostly happens in Goodreads but then I also look up uh, YouTube reviews booktube reviews as well and uh, see if I'm still interested and buy my books recently I have I'm trying to avoid buying books from Amazon uh, but unfortunately the books that I want uh, sometimes are not available on other websites here in India it's a very limited option that we have uh, but still I try to go out whenever I can uh, and try to buy from the local bookstores and uh, help them out by doing that so those are my book buying habits or process prom number nine what's your reading process my reading process over the years have changed because when I was a child, I was always reading because I didn't have any responsibilities. I didn't do, had to do any chores at home. The only thing I had to do was read and or read my storybooks or read my, uh, you know, school books. Uh, I, I oh my god! When I look back, I wish I just could go back to that time and you know just stay there because you don't have any responsibilities. <laughs> you can just lay down on the bed all the time. Food comes to you, uh, and everything is served to you by your parents. Ah, uh, such a nice time. Anywho, <laughs> coming to my reading habit or reading process, I get up in the morning, I have the morning coffee, I do a little bit of daily planning, and uh, then I sit down to read my non-fiction book that I'm reading currently. I read at least 10 to 20 pages in the morning, but I have to hurry, hurry because then my trainer calls me for my online workout so i do that then i you know get on with my daily business and during the day if i do get some time to read i do but otherwise after finishing all my work you know cooking and cleaning and all that um i settle down around eight o'clock in the evening then then i start binging all the booktube release of the day and then once i have done with that i start reading my book and i at least read two hours i try to read at least for two hours uh, in the evening in the night before i go to sleep so this is my reading process uh during the weekdays i do read a little bit more so that's my reading process i hope i didn't bore you prom number 10 how do you use what you read i think uh, mostly this is aimed at non-fiction books uh, i read a lot of popular science book and history books this is my main main books and recently i've started reading a little bit of linguistics and a little bit of philosophy here and there uh, when i'm reading these popular science books obviously it's it, it is for acquiring more knowledge on the subject at hand and I try to make notes and then I uh, when I have uh, uh, you know discussions and talks with people about the subject I get a chance to use them now because I'm a non-native English speaker for me it's very important that I that I continuously read and improve my proficiency in English language so I continuously read and when I'm reading I make note of new words that I come across I write them down or at least if I'm reading on my Kindle then I mark them and you know try to revisit them whenever I can and try to use those words uh, in you know some if I'm writing on my in my diary or you know journaling or something I will use those words I definitely use my reading to improve my vocabulary to improve my proficiency uh, in the English language because I'm a non-native speaker and in general if it is non-fiction to improve my knowledge on a particular subject and also to use them when I am having conversations about those subjects uh, in with friends or in a public platform like uh, Facebook or you know in any other discussion forums etc interesting prompt next one if you could download a book to your brain would you still read you know if I have finished a book in eight hours that means I could have finished it in six hours realistically speaking uh, but I take eight hours uh, I like reread some passages which I loved. I sometimes make notes of things that I like. You know, I have an umpteen number of notebooks here, which I always keep at hand, you know, to make notes. 
so i take my own time with the book that's why sometimes you know i feel that um, you know the number of books that i finish in a month is very low when compared to other book readers because i'm a slow reader um, in general plus with all these <laughs> activities in between that i'm spending my time on definitely takes more time so if there's an option to download a book you know for example if it's a study book or you know if it's some kind of a information book then definitely i'm fine with you know it being downloaded directly into my brain but if it's a story i like to consume it uh, by taking my own time so i will definitely continue reading the natural way even if there is an option to download books problem number 12 what are your views on rereading a book uh, i don't reread books unless they are really 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 good that i want to reread them so recently i just finished reading uh, the books of the Abbey series by Josiah Bancroft and I'm so 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 impressed by that book I'm so enchanted by that book that I want to read it again I can't wait to re-read it next year sometime and um, there are so many quotable quotes so many emotional scenes which really touch my heart there is a lot of takeaway from that book um, and the book in general has an interesting plot line so I definitely want to reread this particular book series and uh, coming from a person who never rereads this is definitely a compliment for the book so if you haven't read that book series please go and check it out it's the books of Babel series by Josiah Bancroft there are so many books thousands and thousands of books out there waiting to be picked up by Angela and be read so no <laughs> I will not read it until and unless it's very very necessary and I just cannot stop myself from doing it prompt number 13 what makes a good book or oh, sorry what makes a book good I think this is a very subjective question uh, for me a book is good when the prose is good I don't need huge elaborate plot all the time but I love books with great plot lines but if it is not written well I might just DNF it so for me it's not what is written but it's how the book is written that uh, is more important and uh, I might lose interest if the writing style is boring or dry and then I, I, I may just throw it in the bin metaphorically what happens is I generally put that back on my bookshelf and then unhaul it later on I never throw a book in the bin even if even if it's a book that I hated I cannot make myself do that <laughs> prompt number 14 what makes a book bad <laughs> okay this is the same answer I think bad writing that's what is going to make a book bad it might have the best plot line the best of characters great great artwork and maps and whatnot but if it is not well written if it has dry prose and boring characters and dragging scenes playing out then it's definitely going to be a bad bad book i just realized i had to add something to that you know i never talked about character as being important to me when it comes to a book um, you know they need not be extremely well written characters as long as the plot is good but that's not completely true if it is if, if it's a character is badly written and is not making any sense at all and uh, doesn't feel real then definitely that will put me off so I will add that also uh, into my answer into this answer that you know a badly written character can also spoil the book for me prompt number 15 how do you feel about not finishing a book I feel sad if I don't finish a book definitely sad first thing is that uh, you know the only reason I will DNF a book is because I did not like it or I absolutely hated it like if I completely hate it and there is no redeeming quality at all in that particular book then that's when I will DNF that book otherwise I'll try to push through it recently happened with a very popular book a movie also released very recently highly acclaimed movie uh, so I, I will not name it <laughs> but I think you would have guessed it but I read it it's a classic book written back in the 50s or 60s and uh, science fiction if you're not if you need more clues you're not going to get it because you should have got it by now uh, which book I'm talking about even then even when the book was not resonating to me I pushed through and I finished it because there were many other redeeming qualities because I tried to push through like you know I did try doing emotion reading and oh thankfully surprisingly the audiobook was really good so it really improved my experience of uh, consuming that book so I definitely you know did not DNF it I finished the book if I really shut a book before I can finish it that means it's really really bad and I will never pick that book up again problem number 16 should the author's personal life matter at all 
So this question is uh, usually asked in the context of art also, whether we can separate the art from the artist. There was a time I used to struggle with this, uh, but not anymore. For example, I love this movie, uh, Midnight in Paris. Then we hear about Woody Allen. And uh, can I still love the movie? Yes, I still love the movie. I still watch it. On a cozy night, when I just want to kick back and relax, I will definitely watch this movie. And that's what this movie means to me. I love that movie. But that doesn't mean that I am um, supporting Woody Allen for whatever he has done. I'm not condoning his actions. But will I go and consume more of his content if he's releasing new stuff? Maybe not. So the same with J.K. Rowling, like, you know, with all her controversial um, stance that she's taking, uh, I might definitely not read any of her new books, definitely not her detective books, but I will definitely read Harry Potter again and again because there is so much of nostalgia associated with that book. Uh, that book series is an emotion, right, for most of us. At the same time, I will definitely not condone her behavior. I will never give her any more of my coins. That means any of her new works might not find me as a reader. If a person has a very uh, regressive um, attitude, regressive uh, opinion, things that have socio-political uh, implications, then I will be very mindful about uh, uh, any kind of uh, leakage of those regressive attitudes uh, into their work. So. I don't know if any of that made any sense, but uh, I think I'm thinking out loud. But yeah, that's my answer. But great question, Brandon. Problem number 18. Do you ever read a book without knowing anything about it? I usually read, you know, without knowing anything about the book when I was a child, when I was growing up, even when I was a young adult. But nowadays, we have the luxury of having online a uh, reservoir of information about anything and everything so because I don't reread re books because I believe in using my time as efficient as possible I try to streamline the kind of books that I put in my TBR so I do my research oh, I hate that word no I do my due diligence before I read a book or pick a book for reading so I definitely definitely uh, um, do not pick up a book without knowing anything about it. No, I never do that. Problem number 19, what author, genre, series or culture can you just not get into and why? <laughs> this has to be romance. I hate reading romance books. Uh, come to think of it, I read Fault in Our Stars and I loved it. I absolutely adored it. So maybe I'm not reading the right kind of romance, but generally romance as a genre does not uh, attract me. Uh, but, uh, you know, there is this, uh, you know, one-off great book that comes once in a while, like The Fortuna Stars, then I would definitely read it. Problem number 20, do you think everyone should read and why? I think everybody should read. That's because I think there is something out there for anybody and everybody uh, that interests them that they can pick up and read. It could be fiction, it could be non-fiction, like short stories, comic books, children's books, uh, anything for that matter just pick up and read uh, and uh, you know you, I believe that you know even a person uh, who is not who says or who claim to be a non-reader can find something that they are interested in because I see people um, you know reading blogs people who claim that they don't read books going through Wikipedia that's you know that means they need information their brain or their self needs information they think that they don't want we need to read or they don't have the patience but that can be developed over time but they are not giving that much attention our brain is built to consume information to consume stories so i think everybody can find something that they can read and they should read it somebody has not realized by now and you are listening to me now please book pick up a simple book and start reading it will change your world that wraps up this book tag please thumbs up and also please subscribe to my channel and also please grow to Brandon's channel, Brandon's Bookshelf and subscribe to his channel as well. And uh, yeah, that's it. I will meet you in my next video. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.